Hey everyone, this is Josh Carney. In this quick course, I'm gonna take you through all of the main updates in Cubase 10. So the first most obvious update is the new user interface. You'll notice this is crisper and clearer looking because almost every window and dialog in Cubase 10 has been updated to work with the high resolution of 4K displays. This also includes the plugin windows as I'll show you in a moment. The edit tools are slightly different looking but functionally are the same. You can hold the right click button to pull these up and then just hover over the tool you want to select and then release the right click button to select that tool. Some of the tools like the line tool here have multiple sub tools you can select from a drop down menu. Just left click these while holding the right click to select these. To quickly go back to the object selection tool, just right click and you'll see that I'm back on the object selection tool again. Colorizing tracks has been updated as well. You'll notice that there's no longer a color tool in the toolbox, and this is because there's a new colorize selected tracks or events option up here. If you don't see this, go to the setup toolbar icon in the upper right corner and make sure the color menu is shown. You can also access the color menu by pressing Option Shift C on a Mac or Alt Shift C on a PC. Here you can select any tracks or events and quickly color them. Also, the color menu will stay up until you close it, so you don't have to keep pulling it back up to change colors on multiple tracks and events. Adding new tracks has also been simplified. The old way of doing this is to right-click in the track header area to select a new track, or right-click on an existing track and go to Add Track, and then select the type of track you want. Another way to do this is to go up to Project, Add Track. Note that the icons for these tracks in the menu, as well as the icons on the tracks themselves, have been updated. There's two new options up here to add tracks. The down arrow will show you all of your global tracks, or tracks that you can only have one of in your project. So there's no need to have more than one tempo track or arranger track, for example. For tracks that you can have multiples of in your project, you can click on the plus button, or press T on your keyboard to pull up the add track dialog. Here you can select one of nine different types of tracks, including the main ones you'll typically use, audio and instrument tracks. If I add an audio track, for example, I can click on the gear icon here to pull up the audio connections dialog. Here you can see that I only have a stereo input path on inputs one and two setup. If I select input three as my input source for my new mono audio track, it'll automatically assign a new input path for it. You can give your track a name and you can choose how many of this type of track you want to create. A cool new feature is the Keep Dialog Open option. This allows you to create multiple tracks one after the other without having to constantly reopen the Add Track dialog over and over again. So if I want an audio track, followed by a couple of instrument tracks, and then maybe a sampler track as well, you can do this quickly without having to continually reopen the Add Track dialog. Once you're done, you can just close it out. The channel strip functionality has also been updated in Cubase 10 with a new look and some new functionality. I just want to mention this now, but I'll take a deeper look at this in a later tutorial in this course. Some updates have been made to the media tab as well. Make sure the right zone is up by clicking here or by pressing Command Option R on a Mac or Control Alt R on a PC. This will hide and show the right zone. Then in the media tab, you'll see some nice new icons for VST instruments, VST effects, loops and samples, and other options as well. I'll go to VST instruments, and you'll see that you can sort these by category or by vendor. So if I just want to view the Steinberg instruments, you can click here. You can also choose to expand all or collapse all of these. If you click on this icon, you can choose to preview a picture of each plugin as well. If I click on the home button to go back and select my VST effects, this same organization and functionality has been adopted here as well. You'll notice that for third-party plugins, there's no plugin picture. If you load a third-party plugin, you can now click on this picture button at the top of the plugin window, and this will take a screenshot of the current state of the plugin that you have open, and then it'll show that screenshot as a plugin picture in the media tab. Another new update is that you can now drag and drop VST instruments and effects directly from the media tab. So I can drag a VST instrument into the tracks area to create a brand new instrument track with that instrument assigned. 
or I can drag an instrument directly onto an existing instrument track to assign it. You can also drag and drop VST effects directly onto a track. Simply drag and drop it onto the desired track and the effect will be assigned to the next available effects insert. You can also choose to drag and drop this onto a specific effects insert by pressing Option I to make sure that your inspector is shown in the left zone. And then make sure to show your audio inserts here. Then you can drag and drop the VST effect on any insert you like. So that's an overview of the new interface. Stay tuned as I go through each of the exciting new features in Cubase 10.